I'm just going to throw cards, the Shadowland Tarot, which is new to me deck, um, on Gwen Shamblin. She was a TV evangelist that had uh, what she called the Remnant Church. And here in May, she and her husband and some other members of her church, the Remnant Church or something like that, um, passed away after the plane crashed apparently shortly after takeoff and everyone was killed on board. Now I've always wanted to kind of see what happens with people that use religion to fleece uh, the vulnerable, you know. And I, I just want to take a look at her and see what the cards are going to show us about the situation and what we need to be aware of, um, things of interest. So this is a new deck, so I should be shuffling as I'm talking to you to make sure it gets really thoroughly shuffled. Before her death, she was doing some sort of workshop or series on greed, no less. So that's interesting. Um, her husband was actor Joe Laura. He played Tarzan probably back in the 90s. Um, and I looked at both of their birth charts, what I have is available. I will be um, putting those up, I, uh, the, the PDF that lists it, their chart. But uh, she was an Aquarius, and she had a lot of Aquarius and Capricorn in her chart. I noticed that straight up. It was interesting. A lot. And he's a Le or was a Libra. And he had a good deal of Libra in there. But there was something else that was that stood out and I'm blanking on it at the moment. But anyway, um, I'll, I'll carry on here. So I want to see what caused the, the, the wreck, because it can take up to, apparently, like two years for them to thoroughly investigate uh, a crash like that. That's what the rep news report read that I... That's what the news report said that I read. Okay, so let's just see if we can get, first off, what happened to that plane? Why did it crash? So it was she and her husband and some other members and their wives uh, aboard this small aircraft. I think it was a kind of a smaller plane. Let's just see what we get. All right, and again, I am venturing out and using very interesting, and some of you may not like it, but um, the Shadowland Tarot. It's like this thing is a monster. It comes from this is a big metallic lid. So quick unboxing. It comes with the book and and cards. Pretty nice book here. Might as well take it out in case one of their... But this is the tarot, so... Anyway, I'll have it out. And this is made by uh, the Shadowland Tarot, Monica Badursky. Okay. Has a bit of character to it. Oh, sorry, you cannot see. There we go. All right, so let's see what we get. Okay, I'm gonna do the Celtic cross just to take a look at what caused the plane. Let's see if we can figure it out. This is interesting because it did go down in, in kind of, I think, some water. Look at that. But this is the Six of Swords. And they were this is kind of weird. 
I'm getting kind of a weird vibe there. Not like bad or anything, but like I'm tracking. Um, now, they were definitely traveling with that Six of Swords. This usually means going uh, into a better cycle. But it can also mean many times transitioning. Simply that symbol of the ferryman, uh, if you will. This card comes up a lot for me also when there's somebody, you know. But we have to kind of both situations mirror here. And this is the very first card. You know, they were on a journey. They were going somewhere. I should find out where. But as is my nature, I tend to kind of initially just keep the barest bits of information. But yeah, they certainly were all headed somewhere. This probably would have been some something that was uh, going to definitely put their ministry, I think, um, in a very good place. You know, I feel like there was there was a good deal of uh, motivation to take this trip to do this. And they're being escorted. And it looks like it did go down in water. Kind of a marsh area. Let me just check out that detail. All right, so here's the here's a little bit of detail for you. And this is from um, Wikipedia on Glenn Shamblin. And I will include it in the description box in the video. Um, on May 29th, 2021, Gwen and her six and six church leaders, including her husband Joe and son-in-law Brandon Hannah, were killed when her 1982 Cessna Cetacean 501 private jet bound for Palm Beach, Florida, crashed into Percy Priest Lake. Percy Priest Lake you got to be kidding me. Even they crash into a, a lake that's named after a religious figure. You know, a priest. That's just kind of weird. Okay. Near uh, Smyrna, uh, Tennessee, shortly after takeoff. Smyrna, yeah, Tennessee. I'm probably not saying that quite right. I know how to say it, but it's like I can't get it out. <laughs> okay. Now, she was uh, 66 years old. And she met Joe Laura. She was married prior to, you know, uh, him. But she met him while living in Nashville. He was working as a handyman which is what initially introduced him to the Remnant Fellowship Church. So it doesn't sound like he was doing much acting. Um, and Gwen. Laura grew up in, with a... He, was, he grew up with a wealthy stepfather and reportedly had a history of dating women who had the financial means to support his lifestyle. Shock. I don't believe it. Okay, so she married the handyman and the actor. I mean, there's, there is no shade on being an, a, a handyman, but this kind of guy, he's handy in a lot of other ways, too, I bet. Not, I, I just, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, and, and he, let's see if we can get an age on him. He was 58. So she was a lot older than him. Hmm. Well, I'm not surprised. No shock here. Now, she was an American author as well and founder of the Christian diet program, The Way Down. Way as in W-E 
I-G-H, Way Down Workshop, and founder of the Remnant Fellowship. Now, this I haven't seen, and I will watch later at some point. She is the subject of 2021 HBO miniseries, The Way Down, God, Greed, and the Cult of Gwyn Shamblin. Um, she was born February 18th in Memphis, Tennessee, 1955. And she has two, she had two children, I think, with a, a husband. She married Joe in 2018. But I think her children are from her prior marriage to David Shamblin, 1978 to 2018. Okay. Little, little backstory. So, there's questions too. Was Joe the pilot of the plane that crashed? And the FAA suspends examiner who approved pilot, oh, in fatal crash in Percy Priest Lake. Keith Chapman, a longtime designated pilot examiner for the FAA, had approved, he was, I knew it, I had a feeling, oh, Former Tarzan actor Joe Laura's certification to fly the Cessna 501 that crashed into Percy Lake in late May. I had a feeling for some reason that it was him, and I, don't, I didn't even know that, so that's interesting. All right, enough about that. Let's get on with the reading. So it crashes into a lake, and look, this looks most definitely like a lake. Kind of almost like Loch Ness in a way has a kind of that feeling, but um, interesting. Okay, now why did it go down? Page of Swords. Okay, this is not being watchful enough, not looking at things, and looking especially with the Page of Swords. It's carries a very watchful, aware, alert energy. And this as a challenge with regard to this plane crash shows that there was a lack of mental alertness. It wasn't, you know, paying attention enough. A lack of and also with that page, I don't know that he should have been anywhere near there. It d does not show a developed, a really very well developed point of, of even concentration. It's, it's a younger card. So it makes me feel like he may not, Joe, if he was the one flying this plane, it seems like he may have been, was. Um, doesn't look like he really, not feeling like he was up to the task, okay? Should not have been doing it. Based on the Knight of Swords. And it's interesting, we're getting the, you know, this is a plane, and look at the, you know, we're getting a lot of air. And interestingly enough, both he, of course, and his wife were air signs as well. So, and the basis of the reading is the Knight of Swords. And this is, to me, this is like, um, I'm questioning also the maintenance of the plane. I'm questioning um, with this, it being ready to up and fly. Somebody, I don't know, maybe, maybe it just wasn't being looked after the way it should have been, because I really feel like I'm getting the plane. The plane, the plane. I really feel like I'm getting that with these cards. Very interesting deck. Um, crowning, oh my god, it's another lake card, is the Seven of Cups, and this is confusion. This can also indicate scattered thinking, sometimes because you're taking things, or it can be sometimes even an organic issue where you just kind of scattered, you know, thinking. It can also be 
sometimes intentional, trying to confuse, but I see confusion. And I feel like I feel like he wasn't able to pay attention the way he was he should have. Just wasn't very pardon, I don't mean any pun here, but grounded. You know, not just not didn't have his stuff down that day. Knight of Wands. And I think this feels like a hurry. I wonder if they were running late or if they were just anxious to get moving. But I feel like there was a lack of follow through, of keeping on top of things, monitoring visually. And I feel like the, um, you know, in the airplane, the cockpit, the, the dials and all of that, all that reading of those um, instruments, I I'd, I'd feel like he wasn't doing that like he should have, not quite as developed as he should have been. That's definitely clear. It just feels like somebody who, you know, was not, which would be Joe, I guess, not down for this. Not an experienced enough person. And he had maybe a moment of confusion. Yeah. King of Pentacles. Now this could be one of the other people on board. But this could also be someone that, um, perhaps the person that gave them the okay for him to fly that day, that FAA guy. The moon. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm just feeling like there wasn't enough care. Um, and I feel like awareness I feel like enough training um, wait this man was way too distracted for whatever reason and I think he wasn't paying attention to the the instruments maybe as important ones that I suppose that might you look you would look at when you're taking off This also has the cover-up feeling. So I'm, I'm thinking they're going to, whoever it was that's kind of shined this guy on to go ahead and fly, I, I think is going to be looking mighty shady. Pardon the pun. Oops. So there's a lack of clarity also, and I get that with the confusion and the moon. And I definitely feel that this crash happened because somebody was not, as I said, watchful enough. And I feel like they didn't have the maturity or the seasoned pilot ability, I think, to handle like a sudden issue. And I think this was totally preventable. But I think these people wanted him, you know, I think he wanted to fly, he wanted to do that. And I think people were too happy to say yes. And he should not have been anywhere near a plane. I think he needed certainly more lessons or something. The high priestess, there's secrets here. And this is in the environment. Yeah. Um, he had no business being up in that flying that plane it just is very apparent and it sure sounds like someone did him a favor and gave him clearance to fly and I think that guy is going to be in you know some troubles but there's going to be more secrets 
surrounding this and and the crash that that come out i really just feel like it joe was flying this plane it says as much and it doesn't look like he knew what to do it doesn't look like he was up to the task didn't have the concentration and the awareness i feel like um, you know developed enough and I think something simple, relatively simple, um, he missed or he just didn't pick up on with the instruments. And it ended up causing the crash. Now, in the environment, there may have been some hidden aspects too with that high priestess. And I feel like... Um, the information is there, but um, they just have to look over the um, info. Sorry, Kitty's having a hairball. Hang on. Okay, what I get as a fear is the Queen of Hopes and Fears. I get the Queen of Cups. This to me really feels like her, her ministry, um, wanting to continue on that way. But I also think maybe she feared. Um, I wonder if she feared crashing in the water. I mean, who wouldn't? Uh, and the end result is the Queen of Pentacles. And look, there's like money. Can you see that in that cauldron? Let's see if I can get that to... Anyway, I felt greed. There you go. Now you can see it. And she had so much, though she was an air sign and had a lot of Aquarius, she had just a ton of Capricorn. And I'm glad I looked that up because I initially may have thought this was someone else. Um, but then again, maybe not because, you know, these people are greedy. But here it shows the greed issue as far, with her. It feels ill-dignified. And wanting things, I'm feeling like, to get going. She wants to get that money. Um, and the king of pentacles as well. I feel like this was, they were interested in a financial um, reason for going. And it shows up as, I think, contributing Definitely. I got the king and the queen of pentacles. And the, this covetousness with this couple is very heavy. Okay. So that answers that question for me. I feel like this is pilot error. I do. I feel like it's inexperience. And possibly not... I don't know who is keeping the plane up to maintenance wise but there may if there may have been an issue there too maybe that's part of what is in the environment as a a truth that many people are not aware of it's not straight out there so this makes me feel like they'll get the the answers that they're searching for um, though for right now it might may seem mysterious um, but I see the motivation of, of money with the with her and I feel like her husband um, and the other members that she had with her. I feel like they too uh, were all about those benefits. And they had a lot of secrets. Um, this doesn't surprise me either. They were shady. This was a fleecing. Now for clarity we're getting I'm pulling two cards and I'm getting the, the Four of Swords and the Eight of Cups. Um, it kind of goes with that Six of Swords. So it looks like this is about also where they crashing. Um, to me this is 
the end, no coming back from that. They they had to uh, move on. Oh, it says embalming fluid. Okay, so it just looks to me like their lives were lost and they had to abandon these plans that they had ongoing to rake in hand over fist, I think, a good deal of money and a good deal of like the, the business aspects of this. Now, I'm getting with these two cards and I'm feeling like they are ill-dignified. This is talking about, you know... This should be about rest. This should be about, like, you know things are taken care of, whatever. But I, I feel like there may have, again, been some source of panic, stress that led up to this problem with the plane. And a great deal of responsibility, certainly, to fly the plane. But there's they're saying here also that if you're depleted, it's also saying physically you're being asked to check your blood pressure, iron, B12 levels, and any recurrent exhaustion. So financially, this is not a time to think about your finances, even if things are difficult. So the anxiety, as opposed to acting, will simply leave you stressed. The anxiety of overthinking, sorry. So I think Definitely with the confusion, I think that he was, Joe was thinking a lot. I think he was thinking of too many things and he just didn't have the flying part of this downright. And I think there was the push um, to definitely get out there to wherever they were headed. And, you know, it's all about business. And... I feel like it's his responsibility. This this responsibility comes out with the Eight of Swords. Oh, I'm sorry. Eight of Cups, wrong one. This deck is a little... The pictures are different, so I'm just adjusting. But this is very interesting, getting an interesting reading, because this one says embalming fluid. Oh, it's just a little... Okay, so it's supposed to be a mummy. Oh, okay, that's taken off its um, wrap. A mummy walking into the desert, leaving behind tinctures and fluids that no longer serve him. The bottles and old mummy wraps represent emotional situations. Uh, he no longer needs to preserve himself, literally, or the past, and he's ready to move on and walk toward a new life. Hmm. Oh, I feel like there's, as, as a shadow of this, I'm getting indecision and baggage. Even the word baggage was, did, I wonder, was there too much weight? That's always a possibility with that word. Certainly I'll throw it out there. But I think once again, there was some uncertainty. There was some hesitation. There was some panic. Definitely we're being shown that caused this this crash and a lack of an ability to evaluate objectively what to do and now they just have to move on they you know this is like done and dusted there may have also been some major financial uh, again It's saying uh, inclination. So I, again, I feel like they wanted to get out there and partake in what was bringing them in money. So that's what this was all about. And I just don't think that he was up to the task. I don't think maybe everything was checked just so. I don't, maybe they had on a little bit too much weight on that plane. I'm not sure. But it feels like it was rookie mistakes is what I get why it went down. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at um, after the event, what did they have to see? Because I'll, I want to just see what, what the cards have to say about the way they lived and how they felt about it 
if they've, you know, looked through that. So that's going to be the next part. All right. So I'm going to look now at Gwen in the afterlife, and I'm, I'm going to ask how she felt and is feeling, um, given the situation, what she has experienced, just from her perspective, her consciousness, her awareness, her energy. So what has Gwen Shamblin had to see? Um, what is she feeling? How is she feeling in the afterlife about her life? this life cycle she just experienced as this very wealthy evangelist. So I'm asking the Most High, the Holy Spirit, to guide me, to help me to read accurately and clearly so we can just see what the lesson is reflected. Some things we may not have expected, who knows? Keep an open mind. Okay, we have the Two of Cups. I really do think, firstly, she and Joe were actually a fairly good fit for the kind of people that they were. So she's focused on that relationship and being with, I think, with him. All right? I think that, that her world, her universe really, I, I think they were very much actually very close. Um, and that it was certainly, uh, she had the money, he had a history of being attracted to women that had a lot of money. But I also think, and I saw this in their um, astrological birth charts, that it looks like they would have been fairly well matched. Um, and I think that that's speaking about that with, with regard to Gwen. Crossing her is the Four of Cups. Look, never enough. She had enough, but she never felt like with that Four of Cups that she had enough. She had an issue with a, um, a fear of lack and it's saying that no matter how much she had it would never be enough there was constant um, looks like a constant conversation going on in her mind about but what if and just clinging to um, I feel like a sense of more is better, you know, just never enough, Not just not being satisfied. A restlessness, definitely. And I think that's what motivates a lot of those people that it, you know, get ridiculously, obscenely wealthy, whether it's through legitimate means or not. And th there's this issue with clinging of, they don't feel like they've got enough around them. There's always room for more. Um, bottomless pit comes to mind also. Nine of Pentacles. This is the lifestyle. And this was my lifestyle card. Usually it's a card of financial freedom and independence and a very beautiful... Um, home, grounds, lifestyle. And she liked the lifestyle, no question, that she had. And that was important to her. Absolutely. Pentacles. And this lifestyle that she was living was never enough for her. Give her a plane, she probably thought she should have a, a private jet instead of a small Cessna. Who knows? 
That I would definitely say. Um, the Wheel of Fortune, she's looking at the Hand of Fate, and also how it isn't just fate, but it's how you, when you do something, what that sets off. You know, the pattern, the chain, if you will. And how it ends up things changing, how it brings about what happens to you. And it has is a great deal, I think, in this case, um, with regard to that being part of her lesson. This con just constant, it feels like to me, feeling of um, not enough. You can just see it. This is a very interesting deck. And I also think that the time came uh, due for when she could exit because of, and both of them could exit because, you know, it's showing that both of them actually have that fear. That's interesting. And the love of that lifestyle, which makes, yeah, makes sense. And it brought about the fate that they experienced. And she's seeing that. In the recent past, there's the Eight of Wands. I think this is the activity, and I think this is also the, the crash. It looks like there may have been a lot of um, panic. Again, we're getting that sense of panic, of things being confusing, of a lot going on. I just feel like her mind was just never quiet. And it was all based on she's seeing this lifestyle. That's what motivated her and directed her. It's also what caused her to pass. Okay, sorry, my husband has to have that stupid thing on. <laughs> um, Ten of Wands. She's feeling the burden. She's feeling the burden of the lifestyle and of about how much energy that took out of her to pursue it. But I think also responsibility. Maybe she had too much baggage on there. Maybe she was rushing him. I don't know. She, she feels somehow responsible. There, there is a weight of responsibility on her. Also, certainly, for this heaviness of, is what motivated her. Of, of, there was actual heaviness where there was a sense of a, a fear of lack. Two, I'm getting that. I also believe it is, without a doubt, then she's going to feel the hardships that being this greedy and where it's affected other people. I, I think she's going to feel the weight of that baggage. I think she tried to avoid feeling scarcity by overindulging here. And there's a chronic, just a chronic here, problem with her. She's indicating we're, we're being shown that with her. And a restlessness to have this kind of lifestyle and at any cost, pretty much. Um, where her mind was as the Three of Swords, there is heartbreak. Um, it can be betrayal. I think she definitely betrayed people. She wasn't telling them the truth. And I'm sure for the people of her church that they're heartbroken. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are. But her mind is on her relationship. And I think there's some kind of regret here. It feels like she was pushing him. And he may have uh, made some errors. 
I think, in that flight. And he wasn't up to the task either. Ace of Swords. In the environment is the truth right now. She's having to look at the truth in the afterlife. Okay? And look at the hardship, look at the heartbreak, look at all the baggage that this fear of lack, you know, has brought to her spiritually and, and through what she did with her church and people's money, not being honest about it. Because it's all based on a delusion and a, a fear that's out of control. The Five of Wands. Now this is in the fear and the hope. So I think it's the fear of, I think, being attacked or someone coming after her. Also, I think, held to account. I think she was also afraid of competition. She was, and, and I think was quite competitive. That would also feed into the fear of lack. Very insecure. Despite presenting herself as somebody that worked on it and overcame it. No, they just switched on to this. It's always been her deal, though. And she's shown the final end result here is the physical decline. And I feel like with the Five of Cups, um, the loss, the death, the grieving, and what that looks like. I think she really didn't like that they went into the water. It just there's just something here. You just may have had a fear of crashing in water or something. I'm not quite sure, but um she's having she will grieve. She will grieve for the loss that her insecurity caused. She's going to feel it above all things that uh, Five of Cups is definitely about feeling. Feeling great heaviness with the Ten of Wands and the Five of Cups because she's going to see it from the point of view of the truth, the Ace of Swords. And it breaks her heart. I think she was just actually, yes, that deluded. But she also knew, I think to some degree, it's just that I think she really couldn't help herself in some ways. I mean, she could, but she didn't want to. All right. Yeah. And I'm seeing manipulation. And I feel like she really believed that she was meant to have this. There's money here. Oh my God. I really do feel like she thought she was, you know, doing some something that was important. But it was just really manipulation. It was important to her and especially for money. Oh my God. Even that's showing up in the uh in the magician. And the Seven of Wands, very territorial. Defensive. It makes me feel like when people, perhaps when they did that, um, now I don't know when that came out, that documentary, if it came out before her death or not. Um, I'm wondering if it did come out before her passing because it feels like she's feeling on the defense and like uh, she's needing against, I feel like, accusations of being a charlatan, of being a manipulator, a con person that's not really, that's playing a game here with people. 
but she's very defensive of it and and also making herself out more than she is just got that with this The Three of Wands. This was her interest in business, I feel like, and in expanding her church. That didn't happen. Ten of Swords. That's just mental exhaustion. This is just collapse. So, I think she also sees the detriment mentally in this focus of more 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 of expanding expanding not having enough and to the point that's a mental really profound mental disorder and I think inside she went through a lot I think she had a lot of really abusive thoughts towards herself and frankly other people at times very odd person and this is the seeker and the seeker's head is off they're using a black cat to see and again the five of pentacles this is not feeling like one is in a place that is as nice as where everyone else is. There's a, const, a constant feeling that you're on the outside looking in. She really always, I don't think she ever felt, no matter how much money she had, like she fit in. That's part of it, observing other people. Still felt like an observer, an outsider. And she needs to dig deeper than, you know, what she did here on Earth because she's going to, she's knowing now. Um, the heaviness and the misdirection and she didn't you know the seeking wasn't really interested I feel like in seeking the real answer she just wanted to feel like a part of something Queen of Swords that's her and the Seven of Cups diluted I think she's having to look at she that she was confused diluted and um but also shrewd you know uh that queen of swords i feel like has is using her ability to organize communicate effectively and she did do that um despite the fact that she was a very deluded person very interesting so she's having to look at the truth. And it's not pleasant. And I feel like she's not quite in the area she thought she'd be in. She's kind of like, what's this? Why Why am I in, what's, you know, where's, where's the fluffy clouds and, you know, this is actual work? What do you mean? I, I do get that. Yeah, there's deceit with the Seven of Swords. She's having to look at her deceit and the Six of Cups and asking people for money and to support things. And the, I feel like the people that she took advantage of in the past, the deceit in the past shows up. And the deceit of her church and her organization. You know, really, that's got to be a real shocker. And she's going to have to endure it. And she's having to endure not being able to move about as freely. She has to endure feeling the heaviness. Of, of the lies that she perpetrated and it carries you know double eights it carries over and she has to develop 
true strength and stamina by feeling the grief, the loss, the hardship that her greed caused. and has caused. Very interesting. Um, the High Priestess and the Two of Wands. This to me is, she isn't quite passed fully over at all. I don't see that. And I think that's kind of stunning to her. Um, she's kind of in an in-between state Again, with the High Priestess, she has got to, uh, I feel like she's between worlds until she does this, until she feels all this that she needs to feel. She doesn't advance on to a different lesson. She's going to have to feel all of that. And that's not going to be easy. Yeah. There's the emotion. It's very intense. It's overflowing, and it has to do with her religion and um, the things that she taught and, and said. All right, let's see what else we get. The Four of Wands and the world. Yeah, it feels to me like this is, she's still doing work that she's going to, and it's going to be the nature that she's got to feel this and process it to kind of wrap that life up and move on. And this has to do with also the community and the world knowing the truth about her, um, the truth about that life, And it's very painful for her, but it has to happen. So that's what I get. Very interesting deep dive. If you like this kind of content, um, please thumbs up and share with like-minded individuals. Make sure that you are subscribed and that your notification bell is on. Thank you so much. See you later.